Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, one, fire. Lords and ladies, geeks, geekerellas, geekulas, and geekeritas. I am Lord Bloodraw, and this is Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Theater. In 1932, Victor Halperin directed the very first zombie film, and the film which, to my mind, features the greatest Bela Lugosi performance, White Zombie. Now, everyone knows that, of course, but... Did you know that in 1936, a loose sequel to White Zombie was made concerning zombies not in Haiti, but in the jungles of Cambodia during World War I? And that's the film we have for you tonight. Ha <laughs> ha! Tonight, from 1936, it's the tale of zombies and unrequited love, Revolt of the Zombies. <laughs> now... As I said, this film was proposed as a sequel to White Zombie, but due to a lawsuit from the Amusement Securities Corporation, a company that helped fund White Zombie, they were banned from promoting this film as a sequel to White Zombie. And, um, you know, it's just as well. Uh, this would have been a rather weak sequel to a great, great classic horror film. But it's still a fun flick. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, my lords and ladies, without further ado, I give to you this rather overdramatically titled film, Ha <laughs> ha! Revolt of the Zombies. <laughs> You don't have to 
tell me you're failed on one. I can read your emotions in your face just as easily as you read the dead languages. You can't find a language in which to convince General Duval. No, the chances are you apologize, stammered. He barked, and you retreated without firing a shot. Wish I had your assurance. Faculty of knowing your objective and driving straight at it. Oh, it's simple. Just impress the other fellows. No more than he does. It has been called ego, Cliff. Oh, yes, but I like the American phrase better. Intestinal fortitude. Don't rub it in. Well, someone should. You know, I admire your knowledge, and you envy my ego. Well, I'll take half your knowledge, and you take half my ego, and we'll have two smart men. <laughs> How much of this high priest story do you believe? Oh, I think there is such a thing as black magic. Call it superstition if you want, I don't know. But I don't believe that you can turn human beings into automatons, or as you call them, zombies. Do you believe in mental telepathy? Might be something to it, I don't know. Well, science does. It's an established fact, Cliff, that in the Orient, the last of an ancient race lives by the laws of telepathy. So their knowledge, their rituals, they're, they're guarded by just such priests as this man, T.R. <laughs> All right, I'll buy you a driver mental telegraphist, but I'll not buy you a robot. Now, look, Cliff. Tiong here comes from Angkor, where, according to their legends, Angkor was built for these robots. Thousands of tireless, feelingless human machines. Yes, yes, I know, and they call them zombies. Controlled and directed mentally by their priest king. Yes, and Tiong here is the last descendant of that priest king and the only man alive that knows the secret of the zombies. Tiong. Bakan oi sava. Bakan an Tiong. Nya oi tang tane. I don't believe a word of it. He says that he says that the general keeps his ears in the ground like 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 the ears of a corpse. <laughs> that he'll not listen to the words of wisdom. Well, what does he want to do? Get the general from here for Eva pray until I Patek Chang Chang Vatoy Akila. Tiang still insists his gods say he must create zombie soldiers. He says he'll show us how a handful of zombies can take an entire enemy trench. of humanity, you must not go further with your experiment. It may mean the destruction of the white race. General Van Schelling, the responsibility is not ours. It is that of a fanatical oriental priest attached to our Cambodian contingent. We have already placed the man under arrest. His experiment ends with that. I thank you, sir. I shall be glad to return with that assurance. We are agreed that since the priest Tiong refuses to reveal his secret, he is a menace so powerful that he must speak in time where he never again can use his occult knowledge. Quite right, General. All right. I suppose so. I am in the column. Sir, your threat of life imprisonment paralyzed not moved this man. He understands it means solitary confinement? Yes, sir, and he still refuses. Then inform him that we are forced to carry through the sentence of solitary confinement for night. Yes. Here. Bakkan etoi va. He is to be confined to his quarters pending his removal to military prison. Yes, sir. Look out.
Maybe the destruction of the white race. Well, this movie was made in 1936, and judging by the look of that Fu Manchu wannabe, I'm sure there's going to be more of that kind of thing in the movie. Uh, this film is a product of its time, as are all films. But hey, did you notice that cameo from Bela Lugosi's eyes? Sadly, that's all of Bela that's in this movie. <laughs> that, of course, was a shot from White Zombie. And this being 1936, I'm sure Bela didn't get paid for it. We'll be right back. If you're watching this, you must love horror, science fiction, B-movies, and weird tales. You can help spread that love by signing up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. There you can help support the production of Lord Blood Draw's Nerve Rack and Theater, presenting the best, worst, and wildest horror and science fiction films ever made. Lord Blood Draw's Nerve Rack and Auditorium, a podcast featuring chilling old-time radio horror shows best listened to in the dark. And Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour, the kind of show kids in the 60s and 70s would run home from school to see, featuring classic science fiction heroes like Flash Gordon, Tom Corbett Space Cadet, Captain Z. Rowe, and many more. Plus, if you sign up, you'll have exclusive access to content available nowhere else, like Lord Blood Draw's B-movie reviews, radio episode commentaries, and more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw for the love of horror. there were no reports about this thing until 1946. What could have happened then to start the stories? 1946? Well, the, uh, the bikini underwater experiments were set off then. Maybe that started something. Deep down in the strange, lurid, murky depths of the Pacific are fantastic, horribly grotesque creatures of the sea that challenge man's courage as no earthly creatures can. Science knows some of the answers, but not all. And among science's unknowns is the strange identity of the living monster from the ocean floor. How did he get out of suit? No man gets through that. Then what happened to him? Here is the first undersea battle ever photographed between a giant killer shark and a woman as she searches for a monster even more deadly. Could absorb a man. Or a woman. Bonnie, cast off! On the double! As we return to Revolt of the Zombies, we learn the answers to two vital questions. What has become of the priest T. Young, and who might have been responsible? Gentlemen, the priest T. Young was murdered. Murdered by someone who did not want the Allies to benefit by his power to create robot soldiers. Or perhaps by someone who tried to take the secret from him to become the greatest force in the world. True. When dealing with these Orientals, 
you deal with fatalism. Death to them is a transition to a better life. Thoroughly understandable. His method of creating these, uh, these zombies must be on record somewhere. So I believe, sir. And it could only be in one of the temples of Angkor. Then we must find it. And when this war ends, our duties will not end with it. I make a suggestion. And ask that each of you bring it to the attention of your government. Urge them to sponsor jointly an expedition to the lost city of Angkor. And for general appearances, let it be a private expedition. Find the secret of the zombies. Destroy it. Then we shall have to If you'll permit me to say so, sir, I think we've accomplished a good deal. It took took years to make Angkor what she is. Certainly, we we, we can't expect her to divulge her secret to us in just a few months. Yes, but this all costs oh, money, and that. Mr. Nash, how do you like me in this helmet? My dear Claire, I like you in anything. You're a gallant. <laughs> I think I look awful in it. So do I. Now, Daddy, this is the time you are not to agree with me. Well. Maybe someday I'll say something that meets with your approval. I promised myself that, darling. Um, say, Luke, how do you like me in it? In what? This hat. Copper. This. I think you're beautiful. Yeah. You're more than gallant. I, I beg your pardon, Ed. Oh, now you've spoiled it. Is this the discussion of business, or are we playing charades? Proceed, gentlemen. I'll take the minutes to be here. Now, 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 here, I... Pardon. Am I intruding? Well, you're late. Sorry. I was busy. Oh, you were? Yes. Well, that's it, Uh, Monsieur Luke, no doubt, has represented me well, I trust. Well, he made some alibi for you. Hmm. And very nice of him, I'm sure. But I have a habit of handling my own affairs. I'm looking things over today. Well, I'll be pleased to come to you. Hmm. Perhaps uh, Mademoiselle Duval will permit me to... Uh... Thank you, monsieur. I've made my arrangement. Monsieur Luke has consented to act as my guide. I see. In an hour, Monsieur Luke. Thank you, Mademoiselle Duval. <laughs> no, none whatever. So he promised to give up his powers, release his subjects, for this woman he loves. Now, oh, that's my idea of a man in love. <laughs> you believe the legend? Who made it up, old Ankavar or you? It's a true translation of the legend. Would you have given up all that power for Ender? I shall never have power, and I've never known love. <laughs> well, power's not so important. You are in love. In love with old stones and pieces of pottery. <laughs> well, perhaps you're lucky. Perhaps. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, that, that, that's Cliff Grayson. He's one of our best men here. Oh. I'm hungry. Let's go back to camp. All right, let's do. What did you say his name was? Jacob Arman. Oh, no, I mean him. Oh, oh Cliff Grayson. I thought for a while she was in love with you. I chose what imagination can do. I could have understood that. Why? You're so much more her kind. But... There goes that inferiority complex again. You know, someday I'm going to cure you with that. I hope you do. What was it you said once about if you want anything, ride roughshod over everything? Be ruthless. Forget all sentiment. Get to your objective, take it, and hold it. I wonder if I could do that. Uh, perhaps not. But the man that doesn't is a fool. Good night.
centuries old, I expect. Yes, but the wiggle's always the same. <laughs> like this, but well, I presume we, we, we all say mo just about the same thing, so as trite as it is, may I say, I'm the most fortunate man in the world. Bravo! 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 I'm sorry, I, I must be overcome by Armand's emotions. <clears throat> well, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. What father does when he's giving up the only daughter he ever had? You couldn't say anything nicer than that, darling. I've said the right thing at last. I'm improving. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grayson, you were about to say something. Were you not? No, General. Like you, I prefer to listen to that. Well, that's strange. I've never known you at a loss for words. I wish you all the happiness that you deserve. It's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm always wondering where the next piece goes. First thing we know, Claire, you'll be a puzzle digger like us with a sieve and a shovel. <laughs> Who knows? I might be the one who finds the secret of hypnotizing subjects. I know certain people I'd use it on. Did you tell us if you find the secret? Oh, she'd have to. A woman isn't supposed to keep a secret, is she? <laughs> <laughs> Instructions are to prepare for an attack by an unknown enemy. That's what he meant. Me, or I destroy you. Stop. There's something behind this, something we don't understand. The weapon he uses, it's unheard of. Blasting flesh right off the bones. Master control to fleet, set flight pattern to minus point zero eight. You. Increase speed. They're coming right at us! Get down inside the cave!
as we return to Revolt of the Zombies, our little love triangle has become an arrowhead aimed right at Monsieur Luke's heart. Who writes this stuff? I mean, really, that's, that's just nauseating. One thing I've always admired about you was your honesty. The thing I've most admired about you was your loyalty to your work and to your friend, Cliff Grayson. I've never had reason to question his loyalty either. Even now, he's an innocent victim, as I am. I loved him. And I loved you. So did he. But do you think he would ever have admitted it? Unless I... Unless you had used me to excite his jealousy. Exactly. I suppose in your mind you can justify that. A woman in love can justify anything. Be ruthless. Ride roughshod over everything. Forget all sentiment. Decide upon what you want and get it, no matter whom it hurts. I've been told that was the thing to do. And now I find it's a woman's code, too. Well, I, I still admire your honesty. Oh, I have a regret. I've hurt you. Well, you should have no regret. If getting what you want is everything, there should be no regret. Oh, aren't you being a little ruthless now? No. I'm a man who loves you. Even now? Yes. I shall always love you. I have been made somewhat ridiculous, it's true, but still I love you. Oh, I'd much rather that you'd hate me. I wish I could. That would make things so easy. Had you done this to me, I should hate you. If for no other reason, because of pride. Where you are concerned, I have no pride.
ambassador to the Khmer Kingdom of Angkor witnessed a strange ceremony, which witnessed a strange ceremony. Fools. Fools. Under our very noses. does lie in Angkor. Luna, we're going back to Angkor. I want you to go with me. No, thanks. Do not go to Angkor. Why not? Why not? Please. Please to hold a very old religious uh, uh, custom. Because they're glad you all go away. Very dangerous to go back. Why, yes, I believe you're walking through a river in Cambodia, just like I'm walking through the Carpathian Mountains in Transylvania on this dark, foggy night. Oh, look! Behind me. That must be Dracula's castle. And a giant bat just flew out of the window. That must be Count Dracula out for his nightly hunt. Ooh, I better run away, because if the Count gets me, he's gonna... Where's the green screen? There's supposed to be a green screen here. 
I look like an idiot doing this. Coming to this theater soon, The Beast of Yucca Flats. Filmed on the burning hot sands by Yucca Flats. See terror, panic, murder. See the Cardoza and Francis production of The Beast of Yucca Flats. See a man turn killer. See a woman ravaged. See one of the most exciting movies ever made. See The Beast of Yucca Flats. Killer on the loose. Death sweeps across the desert. Panic. A bloodthirsty killer stalks a moonlit desert. Ski. The beast of Yucca Flats. Now back to Revolt of the Zombies. As our heart-sick, mature Luke is on the verge of discovering how to make a zombie. I don't like the picture.
I can't translate that. Where's Luke? He's been absent now for two days without permission. And right in the middle of this important translation, <laughs> he disappears into thin air. None of you. Not one of you are able to offer an explanation. I have discipline in this organization if I have to send every one of you back to your own country. Well, here, Luke. Hmm. Where have you been? In Angkor. In Angkor. By whose leave? Did you repent yourself from your work? Well, I, I thought that you would be glad to know that you... Huh? You, oh, you are incapable, Thor. Did I give you permission to go to Angkor for two days while your work here, insignificant as it is, waits while I wait? But Dr. Travis and Dr. Travis, I but... will not tolerate insubordination. When you sign with this expedition, you agree to abide by its orders. You see, Luke, you are dismissed. You will be provided with transportation back to France on the next steamer, leaving Sagan. But, Doctor... Good day, sir. I will it. No, man. Can you think or speak except as I command? No, man. Una, we're learning to be ruthless. Yes, man.
From the depths of hell comes The Devil's Messenger, starring the master of mystery, Lon Chaney, and Karen Cannon. Leave my message. You'd have to go back. Up there. No, I can't. I won't go back. You deliver that to a Mr. Donald Powell. Don't be afraid of me. The Devil's Messenger delivers gifts from hell, turning man into a ravaging feast. I took a picture of that old farmhouse. There's nobody in the picture. You saw it. Was there anybody in it? No, there wasn't. Somebody has come out of that house, and they're coming toward me. Back from the dead, his lovely victim seeks revenge for her horrible death at the hands of a man driven mad by a gift from hell. Trapped in her icy tomb until the devil's messenger exposed her nakedness in her crystal prison. Now let's get down to here. She becomes the object of a scientist's lust. His consuming desire for her drives him to commit murder to keep her for himself. Not since Eve received the apple have gifts inflicted such unnatural consequences. Tonight at midnight, you will be dead. Just how do you intend to kill me? I have no idea. I don't even know you. Crystal ball foreshadows doom. For it is the plaything of the devil. And only he can change the events it foresees. <laughs> you must see what the devil's messenger has in store for you. We now return to Revolt of the Zombies, as Monsieur Luke now holds the secret of how to create a zombie. And it looks like no more Mr. Nice Guy. Armand, you're a different man. There's no indecision in you these days, lad. You have an authority about you. It's quiet, but one senses it. Like a man who has suddenly found himself. It took me a long time to acquire it. I no longer question what I should do. I do what I want to do. That's fine. But there's always one danger of overdoing it. And that's worse than not doing it at all. McDonald, you're the one man to whom I'm grateful. You're my friend. I always believed in you, lad. I know you did. If you hadn't said what you have, I wouldn't say this. I like you for the way you stood on your feet when another man had the good luck that you deserved. It wasn't for me. That's the way to look at it. She's a grand girl, but he's a good lad. And we'll all be wishing him happiness in another two weeks. Two weeks. mission, considering the fact that your daughter and I will be married in two weeks, and the trip to Estella will take six. 
I sympathize with you, Grayson. But our duties come first. You understand? Yes, sir. As your poet Bobby Burns has said, the best laid plans of mice and men gang after glay. with his alchemy, and the help of his satanic majesty, discover the secret of renewed youth. Just what is the secret you found? I have not as yet been able to enlist the help of Satan, but perhaps you, with your recently acquired habits of appearing at inopportune moments, hold the power to uh, materialize the Prince of Darkness. In possession of the knowledge you hold, I should not need his help. You assume much, my dear Mazovia. I know much, my dear Luke. You should know then that I'm not easily fooled by your attempted subtleties. Any knowledge that I may possess shall be retained only by me. You see, I don't hold you to be a stupid man. You have need of me, my dear Luke. You are a clod. I, a man of imagination. You have stumbled upon this lost knowledge of the centuries. I have hesitated at nothing to gain it. Let me share your secret with you, and the world lies at our feet. In France, did uh, Theon, the high priest, share his knowledge with you? No. And uh, therefore he died. You killed him? With the help of the god of fever. Ah, oh, that you will not understand. This you may, the breaking of the scaffold, so well tested by MacDonald, the mysterious disappearance of Francois and Henri, the refusal of the natives to do any further work. Why? The expedition withdrew, did it not? I knew you would not give up. I hoped you would lead me to the secret. Tiang took this from the guard of Siva. And I took it from him. I thought it was what we all thought. It was a clue, but not the right one. This, I am right then. You have the secret of the zombies. Let me have it. You leave me no choice, my dear Mazovia. You show their judgment, my dear Luke. The secret, the secret lies in placing the right hand. So, the symbol of the third eye of the Summoned by will of one who is to be your executioner. His hands hold steel about your throat. Thank you for 
for reinstating me. So kind. And you, my poor friends, for the unwilling contribution of your soul. You are giving me power to achieve the one thing I want. And I am so grateful. Doubt you would all tear me limb from limb should I ever relinquish this control. But that shall never be. Wow, that was a surprise. I thought he was going to turn out to be the big baddie. It looks like our milk toast Luke has gone a little mad with power. But how exactly does that work? I mean, he only exposed one guy to the horror hashish or whatever that was he was burning and now he can control any mind he wants to did they just not have the budget to film the scenes where he used that smoke on everybody else or did he slip it into their food or something look i know i'm overthinking this but it's my job i do it so you don't have to <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> For two million years in these subterranean caves, a creature of superhuman evil was entombed in a wall of ice, waiting to be free, waiting to live again. Travel with us on a journey into a world where nightmare becomes reality. Two million years ago, got out of that crate, killed the baggage man and put him in there. Yes, I am. It's alive. It must be. Travel with us, if you dare, on the Horror Express. Search the train and find it, whatever it is, and destroy it. But if it's alive... I want this kept quiet. I don't want to panic the passengers. The malignant power of this creature is indestructible, transferring its force from mind to mind, from body body beast is not dead i put four bullets into him you think evil can be killed with bullets satan leaves the animal that you shot was only the host it's alive in someone on this train you saw his eyes one look at them and you're dead anything that moves near that door kill it <laughs> Run, run for your life. Hide, but you can't escape. No one can stop the fury and the terror of the Horror Express. Come on. 
We're going home right now. Come on, back up. We're going home. I sensed the change in him when he took me away. I was frightened. That time Armand was away, he was an uncle. He succeeded where we've all failed. He's found the secret of the high priest and he has power. And both of us taught him the lesson of being ruthless. He knows what he wants, all right. It's you. But what will he do to you? He'll get me out of the way. Our only chance is to get away together and right now. Come on. Your father asked me to say that he wishes to see you at once. I trust you had a pleasant trip to... to... Where was it? Oh, yes, Ishtala, I believe. That trip couldn't possibly have been made at your suggestion, but it was. My suggestion? What possible reason could I have had for that? Same reasons for all these changes that have been made since I was sent over for these men and your scheme to marry Claire. If anything or anyone gets in your way, you ride rough shot over him. Isn't that your creed? Not creed. Just advice I gave to a friend. You also advise, forget sentiment. If you want a thing, go after it and get it. Isn't that it? You proved an apt pupil. I had a splendid teacher. And now I'm the one that stands in your way. You are, but I'm removing you. Then if I marry you, you will send Cliff back to England. That is your offer, is it not? Not my offer. My promise. He goes unharmed. Unharmed? I want your word that you will not make him subject to your will as these others are. These, these. These followers, shall we say. He will not be harmed. I give you my word. I believe that you will keep it. Yes, I will. And I'll do more. I'll let you bid him goodbye. I should like to do that. You love him very much, don't you? I'm proving it. It isn't easy to give up the one thing in the world one loves. No, it isn't, is it? I, too, love only one thing in the world, but cannot give it up. Our difference is I haven't your courage.
an apt pupil. Your teacher commends you. At least I let her remember you as a man. No. Just let me look. I'll miss my guide. Oh, we've got to keep our heads up. I'm going in now. Let it stop. Ten minutes past five. From now on, I shall always have time to run. And mine will always be set eight hours later. For the east. Okay, I know that the acting in these old movies can sometimes be stilted and over the top, but that has to be some of the worst acting I've ever seen. It's no surprise, really, that uh, Dorothy Stone, who plays Claire, only did a total of six movies, and the other five were short films. And as for Robert Nolan, who plays Clifford, this was his only movie. <laughs> but Dean Jagger who plays our zombie master, Monsieur Luke, went on to have a great career in film and television and won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in the 1949 film, Twelve O'Clock High. Good for him. But, uh, in my opinion, the Best Acting Award in this movie goes to, uh, Bela Lugosi's eyes. <laughs> that it could happen in America that it could happen now, that it could ever happen to me. Another murder tonight at Watergate, my apartment. <laughs> to the conclusion of Revolt of the Zombies. And after that, we'll have more adventures in far off lands. If I'm not welcome, open the door again. Start me and I'll roll gently back to my room. <laughs> They'll never kill your spirit, MacDonald. It's all I have left, save my love for my friend. What's on your mind? That which is most difficult to do, and have it understood, give unwanted advice. 
That's true, Mac. But go ahead. You're the one man I'll listen to. Thanks. Well, what's it? What's it all about? You and yours. You've done a terrible thing to her. Is it so terrible to fight for and to get the one thing in this world you want? Not if you played a gentleman's game. I don't like sermons. No, perhaps the truth? Perhaps not. I do. This power which you have, this obsession which drives you on, will defeat you in the end. And it should. You fool yourself with the delusion that you can make this woman love you. You can't do it. No man should do what his sense of right tells him not to do, or desire that which it forbids him to desire. When right ways disappear, one's person must vanish with one's principles. That was said by an ancient philosopher. And I hold these things to be true. Dearest, know that I love you. Loving each other, we are no farther apart than our thoughts could reach. I've just been told that my hope of having you care for me is a disillusion. Would you say that? I married you. I kept my bargain. And I kept mine. For that I am grateful. Is that all I'm to ever have? Your gratitude? Yes. I envy Clifford. I'd give up everything I have if you could just find it in your heart to think kindly of me. You asked me to think kindly of you. Who has control over my thinking? You proved that with my father and others. You've made them subject to your will. I could never do that to you. I couldn't. If I give up this power, if I release these people, then I should really believe that you love me. I'll prove it. I give it up.
I love you. You wondered once how the great priest king Yakubaman lost his power, releasing his subjects. He was enamored of the fair Enza. He did try by sundry means to win her love. But she, as women will, could not care for him. So he willingly gave up his power for this woman he loved. <laughs> So originally, I thought this guy was going to be the villain of the piece. Then Luke started playing Zombie Master, and he turned out to be the bad guy. But now that it's all over, you know who the real villain is, right? Her. I mean, don't forget. I loved him. And I loved you. So did he. But do you think he would ever have admitted it? Unless, I... Unless you had used me to excite his jealousy. Exactly. She got engaged to Luke only to make Clifford jealous so he'd marry her and that sent Luke over the edge. This is all her fault, 100%. Anyway, after this, we'll go from the jungles of Cambodia to the mountains of Tibet. Goodbye, Jews. You never left me without saying goodbye. No clues, no fingerprints, no motive, nothing. But surely if a man was choked to death, there would be imprints on his throat. Why in the world do you stay in this place? We can't leave. And now, my lords and ladies, we continue our adventure in exotic lands with an episode of a legendary cartoon series. These are the stories of a world-traveling adventurer and his two companions as they seek thrills and excitement. 
this 60s cartoon series was shot using the revolutionary and rather disturbing technique called synchrovox in which live action film of actors mouths were superimposed over the extremely limited animation <laughs> my lords and ladies without further ado i give to you clutch cargo spinner and paddlefoot in mr abominable Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and Mr. Abominable. While on their way to visit with an old friend, the Raja of Outdoor, Clutch and company are forced by bad weather to cross a small corner of Mongolia. If we can stay above the clouds, we'll be all right. But we're losing altitude fast. If this keeps on, I'm afraid we're going to be in trouble. I'm not scared, Clutch. Are we, Paddlefoot? I can't keep her up. We just don't have enough power. Blind flying in these high mountains is a dangerous business. Clutch! That mountain just ahead! We're gonna hit it! That was too close. We've got to try and land. You could help a lot, Spinner, by keeping a sharp lookout ahead. Clutch takes the plane lower, and they break out below the clouds. But no possible place for a landing can be seen. Spinner, we're in luck. Look at that ahead. It's a kind of a clearing, Clutch. And I think I can see some tents. Looks like some sort of civilization, Spinner. This is it. Hold on. I'm going to try and set her down. Golly, this wind is cold. Those mountains above us are all covered with snow. Those are the Himalayas, Spinner. Highest in the world. Uh-oh. Here comes somebody. Sure hope he's friendly. We'll know in a minute. Hello there. Do you speak English? Welcome to our humble village. What brings you to our out-of-the-way home? We were forced to land because of the high winds. I'm Clutch Cargo, and these are my pals, Spinner and Paddlefoot. Clutch Cargo? A double welcome, for we have read of your many heroic deeds. Thank you. I am Prince Gung Ho, ruler of our province. But please come by the fire and warm yourself. We are very sad and afraid. Our sacred blue yak, the only one ever born, has disappeared. A blue yak? The yak is an animal much like your cow, only with long fur to protect it from the freezing cold. Gosh, I'd like to see one. You may never see the sacred blue yak, but I will show you our regular ones. Is that one? <laughs> no, Spinner. He is as big as a yak, but that is Chuck Chi, my faithful servant. Chuck Chi, this is Clutch Cargo and Company. Maybe they will help us find our sacred blue yak. You no know find blue yak. Him gone way away. Chuck Chi believes the sacred blue yak was stolen by a mysterious creature we call the Abominable Snowman. I've heard about him. He walks like a man, but looks like an enormous ape. Ah. Golly, do you think there is such a thing? With my own eyes, I see him. Chuck is the only one who has, but many have seen his tracks. This gets spookier all the time. A real honest-to-goodness yaknapper. Prince, we'll be glad to help you. I thank you, but you must be careful. The snow in the mountains is deep and the cliffs are high. And remember, this is the country of the abominable snowman. We'll be careful, Prince. Yes, we'll be careful. Clutch and company, with Chuck Chi as a guide, start on the long, high mountain trek. We haven't far to go to the top. Clutch! Look! What is it? The abominable snowman. Come on, Spinner, we're going to follow him. We are? Maybe he'll lead us to the blue yak. Chuck Chi. Clutch! He's gone! Bobby. Chuck Chi! Here goes the snowman, Clutch. Come on, let's go. The snow's too hard to show tracks here, but I, I think he's behind that snow pile just ahead. Quiet now. Maybe we can surprise him. But golly, Clutch, he looked awful big. <laughs> Clutch and his pals take a careful look. He's not there. Where'd he go, Clutch? There's something moving over to the left. You and Paddlefoot wait here. If you see him, holler. Okay, Clutch. Clutch goes on ahead, while Spinner and Paddlefoot keep watch from behind the snow pile. But something is watching them. Quiet, Paddlefoot. 
little foot. Hutch doesn't want us to make any noise unless we see the snowman. Quiet, Paddlefoot. Yipe! Clutch! Boy, Paddlefoot. There he is again, Clutch. Do you think maybe he's playing? It's hard to tell, Spinner. Hey, you. Who, me? Welcome to the end of the earth. But you speak English. Naturally. Everybody does an egg stain. Egg stain? Yep. Good old egg stain, Ohio, and the good old USA. That's where I'm from. Well, what are you doing here? I was in business for myself back in Ohio. I had an Easter egg factory. One day it burned. So I decided to go to the farthest end of the earth and become a hermit. <laughs> here I am. And we thought we'd discovered the eighth wonder of the world. The wonder is that you discovered me. <laughs> Usually, I stay pretty well hidden. Well, Mr. Abominable, those people down there think you stole their sacred blue yak. I think I saw it. But I wouldn't take anything that didn't belong to me. You mean, you know where it is? Follow me. I'll take you to the place where the sacred blue yak is a prisoner. You mean, it's caged? It's in a pen at the bottom of a deep canyon. How did it get in there? That's the problem. There's no way in and no way out. You mean this canyon has no entrance at all? Yep, that's about the size of it. I had a good look around for myself. I figured that only a mountain goat could get in there. That is, if he had a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> there must be an entrance somewhere. And we'll find it. Come on. Golly, this ice is slippery. We don't want to get too close to the edge of the cliff, Paddlefoot. Oh, oh. Not much further now. Just over this little rise and we'll see the sacred blue yak. Oh, no. Look down there. It's gone. The sacred blue yak is gone. Assume the position and open your minds wide. It's time for your cranial cavity search. Ah, uh, yes, my lords and ladies, the cranial cavity search. Here's a chance for you great geeks out there to prove your geek cred uh, by showing what you know. <laughs> and tonight's cranial cavity search question is... In just a moment, I'll show you the only really haunted house in the world. Since it was built a century ago, seven people, including my brother, have been murdered in it. From which classic haunted house movie does that line come? A. The Haunting B. House on Haunted Hill C. The Changeling or D, The Ghosts of Hanley House. <laughs> From which Haunted House movie does that line come? We'll find out after these very old lines. And the answer to tonight's cranial cavity search question. In just a moment, I'll show you the only really haunted house in the world. Since it was built a century ago, seven people, including my brother, have been murdered in it. From which classic haunted house film does that line come? It was... B. House on Haunted Hill. Ha <laughs> uh, yes, my lords and ladies. House on Haunted Hill the classic William Castle Vincent Price film. If you're watching this show, I'm sure you've seen it before. If you haven't, 
run right out and see it immediately. Well, you know, after this episode. <laughs> Speaking of which, we now return to Clutch Cargo meets Mr. Abominable, who actually turns out to be a guy from Eggstain, Ohio, as they search for the sacred blue yak. You know, there's not too many times in life where you can say a sentence like that, is there? The sacred blue yak is gone! That's where it was, all right. There's the pen where it was kept. Golly, that's a long drop. I don't see any entrance either, Clutch. Only one thing to do. We'll go back and get the plane. Weather's better now. We'll search from the air. Go to my house. I can help you get back faster. Good. But how? With my sled. We can ride to where the snow stops. Then you can walk to the village. A sled? Oh, boy! Clutch and company head for the snowman's home. Here it is. It may not be a castle, but it's home to me. Gee, this would make a swell clubhouse for the kids. Come in. I'll show you how we live at the end of the earth. Looks like you're set for food anyway. Yes, I like to eat. Where's your sled? Right here. It's my bed, too. Good idea. Serves two purposes. <laughs> it's a bed sled. This will be fun. Golly, this is fun. <laughs> Look, a paddle foot. He looks like he's ready to take off. <laughs> slide down here two, three times a week just for fun. Sometimes when I get back, I can't talk for a while. The change in altitude affects my voice. When we get back, if you can't talk, we'll know why. Don't worry. So long, Mr. Abominable. Clutch and company continue on foot toward the village. Welcome back, Clutch and Spinner. Any luck? We thought we met the Abominable Snowman, but he turned out to be some fellow from Ohio. From Eggstein. Egg stain? Yes, egg stain, Ohio. But he's gone hermit. I see. He showed us where the blue yak had been held prisoner, but when we got there, it had disappeared. Disappeared? Oh, no. We're going to take the plane and search from the air. Would you like to come with us? I have never had an air ride. Do come with us. You bet he will, Spitter. Okay, then. Let's go. Watch every moving thing you see on the ground. It could be the blue yak. But not a sign of the sacred animal do they see. Clutch decides to land on the hard snow near the hermit's cabin. I fear we shall never see the sacred blue beast again. But something's going on. Here comes Mr. Abominable. And if he's not excited, no one ever has been. Come on, quick! Hurry! Something. Quick! Follow me! Gosh, he's going fast. Hard to keep up with him. Something terrible has happened. Hey! Wait, boys! What's going on? What's happened? Come on! Quick! We'll find out soon enough, I guess. I know something terrible has happened. I feel it right here. Look! He stopped! Hurry up, you guys! Great news! The yak's back! The sacred blue yak is back. Oh, how can I thank you? What, what is your name? Yes, we can't go around calling you Mr. Snowman. Or Mr. Abominable. Didn't I introduce myself? I'm Jack Jones. From Eggstain, Ohio. I'm Clutch Cargo, and this is Spinner and Paddlefoot. Oh, this is oh. Prince Gung Ho, ruler of this province. This is indeed a pleasure. Imagine meeting a real prince. You are indeed, how do you say, most welcome. And now, how to get the sacred animal to my village? I have just a thing in the plane. The coil of rope, 200 feet long. We'll get it. Clutch gets the rope and ties it to a rock. Then leaving Jack Jones, the snowman, until last, 
they start sliding down the rope. First spinner with Prince Gung Ho last. Slowly and carefully, they descend until they reach the bottom. Okay, Jack, your turn. Start down. My blue yak, my beautiful sacred blue yak. He sure missed you, Mr. Prince. Look how glad he is to see you. Mm -hmm. We've got to get him out of here fast. Whoever kidnapped him is sure to come back. There must be a way out. We better look. I can't let the blue yak out of my sight. What if he disappears while we're gone? You're right, Prince. You stay in guard him while we look around. Come on, Spinner. We won't be long, Prince. Jack Jones, the snowman, makes his way slowly down the long rope. As Jack Jones told them, the change in altitude begins to affect his voice. And soon, he is unable to make a sound. While Clutch and Spinner are searching for a way out of the deep canyon, Jack Jones decides to rest on a ledge halfway down the cliff. Out of the rocks comes a figure who looks exactly like him. You can't tell them apart. <laughs> Poor Jack, out cold. And down the rope comes the abominable snowman, heading for Prince Gung Ho, who is waiting alone with the sacred blue yak. No sign of a way out of this canyon anywhere. We'll have to get some men from the village. They'll help us haul the yak up the cliff. It'll be a job, but there's nothing else we can do. Clutch, look! Oh, no. The yak disappeared again. And no sign of the prince either. Wait, wait, there's his hat. Wonder what's happened, Clutch? Did you hear that? Sure did, Spinner. It's over there. Come on. Meanwhile, the other snowman has just moved a rock back into position, covering a hole in the cliff wall. There's Jack Jones. We forgot all about him. Hello, Mr. Jones. I guess the change in altitude affected your voice, huh, Jack? That's all right. We understand. Jones, boy, stop that. You know Jack Jones. He's our friend. There it is again. It's coming from inside the cliff. Clutch, there's an opening behind this rock. That's what we've been looking for. Jack. Help me roll back the rock and we'll see what we can find. Meanwhile, Prince Gung Ho is recovering from a low blow dealt him by the villain snowman. I was warn Clutch and Spinner. He'll kill them. But too late. Clutch and company are already making their way down the tunnel, followed by the man they think is their friend, Jack Jones. Look, Clutch! There he is! The blue yak! Someone meant to hide him here till we got away. Good work, Padfoot. That wasn't Jack Jones at all. Why, it's the real Mr. Abominable. Clutch. Clutch Cargo. That's the Prince Gun Ho. Oh, I am so happy you are safe. That's a real Abominable snowman, Mr. Prince? No, he's my sweet, once faithful servant, Chuck T. Gong Sour. Chuck T. Hmm. He didn't mean to, but he led us to this tunnel anyway. It's the way out of the canyon. Come on. As soon as we get through here, I'll go up on the cliff and get Jack Jones. Look at what's keeping him. As they come out of the tunnel, they hear a shout. Hey! Be careful. Here comes Chuck T again. That's not Chuck T, Prince. Papa <laughs> footnote. It's our old friend, Jack Jones. From Eggstein, Ohio. And that's where I'm going. I've had enough of being a hermit. You've seen the last of Chuck T, Prince. As near as I can figure it, he needed the sacred blue yak to become the ruler of another province. But now it is safe again. I thank you all, my friends, from the bottom of my heart. Clutch and company take leave of Prince Gung Ho and the sacred yak. There is an extra passenger in Clutch's plane. Yep, I'm going to start up another Easter egg factory. I'm going to make all my eggs look like that there yak and Paddlefoot. <laughs> Paddlefoot, the yolk's on you. <laughs> and so ends the story of Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and Mr. Abominable. Be sure to join us again for the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo.
Well, well, well. We've learned two very important things tonight. One is that jealousy can lead a man to become a tyrannical zombie master. The other is that the abominable snowman is actually Jack Jones, an ex-Easter Egg factory owner from Eggstain, Ohio. It's been a very educational evening. Well, my lords and ladies, I want to thank you all for watching, and I want to invite you all back again next week when we'll do whatever this is all over again. Ha <laughs> ha! As always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, uh, geek out.